I am tired of an old hag. Please lead me. My husband, who had proudly attempted the act of the entrance of our home, said so in an uninterested manner. And the woman he was with also grinned and made a cheap apology, saying, I'm sorry I took you, man. She didn't seem sorry at all. It's been a little over a year since we got married, and I feel ashamed of myself for having loved such a scumbag. But at the same time, I'm grateful for the opportunity saving me from the trouble of taking revenge. I've decided to go home to my parents with a big smile on my face. As I look forward to seeing my husband's expression when he finds out the truth. My name is Alice. My father is a president of a big company, and my mother is a famous violinist. I was proud of my parents as they have always been in love, even though they are both getting older. The time had finally come for me to become a bride. I met my husband when we joined the same club in college and discovered we had the same interest. His name was Ryan, and he was the son of the president of a company too. However, I did not tell him that I was daughter of a company president. Many men would approach me for my house or money, and I felt like they didn't see me for who I really was, and it made me feel vain. So I treated Ryan as a normal friend. However, he asked me for a serious relationship, and we started dating in the summer of our sophomore year of college. When we both graduated and started working, we decided to get married. However, we only enjoyed a year and a few months of newlywed life before I became pregnant. Because we had been friends for long before our relationship, we did not have the same mutual feeling as when we first started dating. Still, I think we respected each other as a couple and kept a good distance. Of course, we also made love, and because we were both young and healthy, I became pregnant a few months after we started trying to conceive. My husband was very happy about it, but the problem was that from this point on, my morning sickness was very bad. I started sleeping a lot at home, and my conversations with my husband decreased dramatically. It was more like I couldn't talk to him because I was too ill. I was nauseous 24 hours a day, and the only thing that kept me going was jelly pouches. However, my doctor told me that during this period, as long as I drank water even if I didn't eat, I would be fine. I stayed patient until the stable period arrived, and the morning sickness settled down. Finally, around the time I was 20 weeks pregnant, it began to subside. Up until this point, I had been taking time off from work because of the sickness. Since I joined my father's company, he was able to take action for my pregnancy from all in on. But I still felt like I was placing a heavy burden on everyone around me. So I got back to work and took over and did my job. Of course, I did it in a way that did not affect the baby. After returning to ward, I was working from morning to night every day. I hadn't noticed it due to my busy schedule, but I felt a little different and uncomfortable in my relationship with my husband. Even after my sickness settled down, my husband was somewhat quiet and didn't talk to me much. Even when I tried to talk to him, he would only respond with a simple all oh, all I see. My husband has been very busy recently and has been tense because he is preparing to take over the company. I thought that was the reason he was so quiet, but it seems I was wrong. One day, when I went to take out the trash, a woman who lived on the same floor in the same apartment building suddenly came up to me. I had only greeted her before, so I was a little wary of her. She looked around and was checking something. Then, she put her hand to her my mouth and quietly whispered something like this to me. She said that several times a week during the daytime on weekdays, my husband will let a woman into his room and she should come out about an hour later. The woman gave me a description of the woman and asked if she was either one's younger sister. Neither my husband nor I have a younger sister, 
My husband has a sister, but she is over 30. She's married with children. And she's not here because she went with her husband to live in a rural area. She describes a woman to be a young woman in her 20s, and that was why she was curious. Since I'm not that insensitive, I thought that my husband was probably having an affair. Recently, my husband has been acting strangely indifferent to me, and he even has been indifferent to our baby. The more I dig, the more suspicious I find. At any rate, I just thanked the woman who told me, and took out the garbage and went back to my room. That evening, I was inclined to question my husband as soon as he came home. However, he was in a very bad mood, as if something had happened at work. He threw his bag roughly and took off his clothes, then went to take a shower without saying a word. After a while, he came out and said, I won't need dinner, Dre. I don't have an appetite and started to head back to his room. I had already prepared a meal for two at the table, and I was suspicious that my husband was cheating on me, so this attitude made me irritated. There's no need to talk like that. If you don't need dinner, you could have told me earlier. And don't leave your clothes and back around. I have been concerned about my husband's sloppiness for a while now. I usually don't say it to him, but today, I felt like I had to say something about it. So I said something like that to my husband. Huh? Shut up, you old hag. He spat out these words and went back to his room. I was shocked that he called me an old hag when I was still in my mid-twenties. I was so annoyed with my husband's attitude that my frustration reached its peak. I ate a whole meal for two, took a bath, and watched a movie in the living room by myself since tomorrow was my day off from work. I fell asleep before I knew it, and when I peeked into my husband's room in the morning, he was gone. I checked the front door and found no shoes. I thought he had gone out for a walk or something, but he never came home again. Yesterday the attitude, leaving his pregnant wife without saying anything, cheating, and not coming home, I am at my limit. I immediately went online and listed several companies that specialize in investigating affairs. Then I consulted with a private detective who had a high rating and asked him to gather solid evidence for me as I was willing to pay him any amount of money for his services. Then, a few days after I got into a cold war with my husband, I had been suffering from an upset stomach since the morning and couldn't concentrate on work. Then my boss, who was worried about me, suggested that I go see an obstetrician just to be sure. I left work early and went to the hospital, where I was told that I was having an impending premature labor. She didn't know the cause, but said it would do me no harm to rest. I thought that I must have put my baby in danger because of the stress I had been under the past few days I burst into tears from frustration. Then, I managed to get home and turn the key. With a sign, I opened the door and was stunned by the sight in front of me. There at the front door was my husband and a young woman I didn't know, embracing each other. I guess they were not expecting me to come home, so they just stared at each other with their widened eyes. Then, my husband, who had regained his composure first, Ia loved me. Why are you home already? My husband glares at me as he hurriedly fixes the sagging of his clothes and wipes the woman's lipstick from his lips. The woman is strangely calm even though she saw me too and smiles at me in a mocking way. What the woman on the same floor told me was true. Hey Ryan, you're supposed to be working right now, right? I see you've skipped work to play with that girl at home with no hesitation. I gave them a look of disdain, but they didn't seem to hear me at all. On the contrary, my husband who had become defiant, muttered this as if for a matter of course. I'm tired of an old hat. You are pregnant and I don't want to have to put up with you all the time. 
please leave me. At that time, I felt a tremendous shock run through my body. I was carrying a child with my husband in my belly and desperately trying to raise it. How could he complain because his needs were not being met? Then the affair partner heard this and laughed hysterically and with tears in her eyes she said, That's here Elias. Well, we're all old hags but we finished gullies, right? I'm so sorry I stole your husband, the next president of the company. From this statement, it was determined that she was in college or younger. I knew this to some extent because I had done some research. But I naturally burst out laughing from their statements. Oh, are you sure? Are you really going to break up with me? I'm going to charge your own money, will you pay it? When I said that, my husband looked a bit jitty for a moment, but then, he immediately sneakered. I guess common women are really greedy for money all day. It hurts to watch. Well, okay. I repay your price, he said. The affair partner knew he was married and still was having an affair with him, so I said I would charge her as well. I repay her share too. He's showing a casual, mature attitude, and the woman is delirious at the sight of it. What in the world am I being shown? Anyway, it happened at the time when I was about to start talking about divorce and alimony, so I guess I was lucky. Witnessing the two of them in action was a huge miscalculation. But it was a good thing, I saved myself some trouble. Later that day, I packed my bags and headed back to my parents' house. The next day, sure enough, I got a call from my husband crying. Wait a minute, you're the daughter of the prison of Smith? That big farmer company? I never heard anything about that. It seems that my husband finally realized that I was the daughter of the president of a well-known pharmaceutical company around here. Or rather, it was inevitable that this would happen. Yesterday, I came home and told my parents, who were very surprised to see me. I told them that the two of them had been engaging in their daily activities in broad daylight, and that they had abused me and declared a divorce. I had hired a private detective, so everything was pretty smooth. My father, who had heard the story, was furious and immediately contacted my husband's father and said, What kind of an education are you giving your son? My daughter came home hurt. No more talk on the project. I will never do business with your company again. Yes, our company and my husband's company actually have a business relationship and our company is superior in position. My husband is in charge of outside sales, and I'm basically in charge of accounting, so we didn't have to deal with each other, so I guess he didn't know. He had no idea that I was an employee of a business partner company, and also the daughter of that company's president. Naturally, my husband's father or father-in-law received an angry phone call from my father. He immediately contacted my husband and called him over. There, my husband learned the whole truth, and he panicked and called me. This is what has happened so far. The flow has changed in just one day after I announced the divorce, and my husband, who is freaking out, is now saying to me, I admit that I was wrong, so please don't divorce me. If our company in Smith Pharma ceased doing business, our company will suffer a great deal of damage. He is desperately trying to restore our relationship, but I had already decided on my answer. After neglecting your pregnant wife and leaving work to make out with another woman in the daytime, you were the one who forced me to leave, saying that you were tired of an old hag, right? If you're going to be the next president, at least take responsibility for your wars. When I said this in her angrily, my husband fell silent. I'm wondering what he thought he could do to get me to forgive him. But even so, I know that if he backed down now, his company will be in serious trouble. It is inevitable that he will be pulled down from his position as successor. 
So, at that time, he hung up the phone as if he had given up. But the next day, he was in front of my parents' house and apologized outside the door. He shouted, I heard from my father. Smith was planning a big project with us. If we get divorced, it's totally off the table. Please reconsider. One minute, my husband was apologizing. The next, he is desperately begging for forgiveness with words of self-preservation. I was truly ashamed to think that there was a period of time when I loved such a person even little. Although I ignored him for a while, my husband showed no signs of backing down. Then, my father, who was reading the newspaper, gulped down all the coffee he was drinking. He put the cup down roughly and went to the front door. And then, go home. I will never let a trump like you see my daughter again. I will have you go through a lawyer from now on. If you don't leave now, I will call the police. He said with a face of a demon. My husband turned pale and left. But when I thought he had left, he returned soon after. This time, my father-in-law joined him. Mr. President, I'm very sorry for what my stupid son has done. I will make him pay for hurting your daughter, so please just the project. Even after hearing this, my father's feeling did not seem to change, and he declared that he would never do business with them again. My father-in-law's complexion was getting worse and worse, and he looked as if he was going to collapse at any time. My husband is shaking as he realizes that he is putting not only his parents' lives, but also the lives of all the employees at risk. This was not going to end well, and I, I had something I wanted to tell my father-in-law. I made a decision to settle the matter here. I had been in my parents' house for a long time, and suddenly showed up, so my husband's face lights up as he approaches me. But when I shook off his hand and glared when he reached over to me, he was in loss of wars, perhaps because he had never been so strongly rejected by me before. I gave him no time to catch his breath and said, You are a married man, and she has a fiancé who is working. And I heard her fiancé works for a rival company of yours. My husband blinks rapidly, as if he had an idea of what I was talking about. My father-in-law, who did not seem to grasp the situation, looked at my husband suspiciously. I told him everything I had obtained from the detective. This man is leaking confidential company information to her. Then, my husband turned the other way and fled. Nah, he couldn't do that. Ryan, do you know anything about this? My father-in-law reacted immediately and grabbed my husband's hand to stop him. My husband's body was shaking in fear, and all he could do was smile awkwardly. Seeing my husband in such a pitiful state, I let out a sigh and continued. The woman with whom he was having an affair, she seems to have been lonely because her fiancé had not been taking care of her recently. So she approached Ryan, the son of the president of the rival company, and tricked him into giving her confidential information. She passed it on to her fiancé to get his attention. You know what? She was just using you. When I said this to my husband with a cold look in my eyes, he slowly opened his mouth and blotted out something like this. It wasn't a coincidence that I met her, so she was the one who set it all up. Oh no, we made a promise that we'll get married if I left you. My husband finally realizing that he was in the worst possible situation, clubs to his knees. The woman, whom he had never doubted, had been an enemy's spy. He loses his wife in the process. I couldn't find words to describe it better than a disaster. In the end, this man was only seen as a son of the prison of the company, and he was only being used. It must be his damnation for abandoning his pregnant wife for his own foolish desire. After I finished speaking, I glanced at my father-in-law. Oh my god, you not only ruined our business with Smith Pharmaceuticals,
But you even leaked information to a rival company. Are you trying to destroy our company? He looked at his son with a regretful expression, as angry as he could be. My husband could not help himself by apologizing to me any further, and he realized that he had done something that could not be undone. And he just froze on the spot. For a while, the atmosphere was heavy and gloomy like a funeral. My father, who was watching what was happening behind me, said, Go home now. I have no more use for you. With that, my husband and father in law left. After that, our company's business with my father in law's was immediately suspended. They could not talk back and had to accept the cancellation of business. We were also forced to deal with the leak of confidential information. I could imagine the employees being overwhelmed by the situation. I heard that they were so exhausted that many of them resigned. In the end, the big project was scrapped too. My husband's company went bankrupt, including the damage caused by the leak of confidential information. At this time, a settlement regarding the divorce was reached, and I finally divorced Ryan and became a stranger. As I had declared, I demanded millions of dollars in i money and child support from my ex husband, including that of the affair partner. Then, he started saying that he would pay his own i money and child support, but he would not pay her portion. So I thought it was a hassle, but I filed a claim for i money to her. I was told that her fiance had found out about the affair because of the content certified letter. Naturally, she was dumped by her fiancé. Everything was settled after this proposal. Her fiancé said that he would like me to do business with him and his company in exchange for him paying his girlfriend's portion of the alimony. Our interests were more aligned with their company, and more importantly, my ex-husband's company is bankrupt, so securing another business partner is a must. She is still a college student, has no part-time job, and probably wouldn't be able to pay what I charge, so I agreed on that. It was also her sole discretion to leak the information in the first place. Her ex-fiancé never asked for any of that. It was not about business. We were able to secure our new business partner, and the project we had originally planned was a great success as a result of working with that company. So I think that it ended well. My ex-husband was disowned by his parents and turned to his sister. I guess because her husband also runs a company, he was also disowned at the door. According to our mutual acquaintance, he is now holed up in a one-bedroom apartment, working from home while working as a guard at night to make a living. Perhaps because my ex-husband was the son of a company president, he had a high sense of pride. I don't know how humiliating it must be for him to live the way he does now, but he deserves it. As for me, I gave birth to a healthy boy safely after that. Even if he has the blood of that scumbag, there is no doubt that he is my child. So I raised him gently at times and strictly at others, so that he would not be like that scumbag. Fortunately, my family is wealthy, and I myself am working, so we are not in financial trouble. We also welcome a dog and cat as our new family members. My parents, myself, my son and our pets live very happily together.